Hey folks, in this episode, I'm going to look at GPTs. So OpenAI brought out this new technology where people can go and create their own GPTs. So I thought, could I get a GPT to pass Tableau's Certified Data Analyst exam? In this session, I'm going to look at how you can go and build GPTs, see them in action, how you can go and improve that custom GPT performance. So when building GPTs, you've got to be careful because all of this is public. So there's a prompt that you can put into here, but it's it's hidden here. Yes, it's hidden from the user, but the user can still, through one way or another, extract the details of that prompt and extract the details of the data set you've provided it. So make sure what you're doing here is okay to go out to the public. So an exam, it should be a pretty straightforward thing for computers to handle. I've got the syllabus from the exam. I've got all the related Tableau help pages. I've now got a data set of all the content from those pages. I'm going to feed that into ChatGPT, give it a prompt to say, hey, use this document to answer all the questions, and let's give it a go. So to test this GPT out, I'm going to compare it to GPT-4, the standard paid version, and GPT-3.5. So this is the free version of ChatGPT, and we're going to see how well it does. It should. It should outperform all of them. It's got all that Tableau knowledge, so it should work. For this exam, I've gone over to his website. They offer 35 free questions from the exam, so I'm going to take those and I'm going to use that as a mock test for this exam. So I've given ChatGPTs all this prompt. You can see here that the my version of GPT is going and using the code interpreter. That means it's reading that data file that I've given it to go and answer those questions, which is great. So we're all started, we're ready to go. I'm going to give it this first question. So for this question, my GPT says it's B. GPT-4 says it's D. Chat GPT, the free version, says it's C. So we've got all kinds of different opinions here. And the answer, in fact, is D. Yes, so the paid version of ChatGPT got it right, but my GPT that works on GPT-4, that I've given more information, has got it wrong. Okay, okay, this, this might be an anomaly, but let's keep the test running and see what happens next. So we start working through more of the questions. Next case, they all got that question right. The following one, they all got that one right. So they're doing quite well. So in the end, my GPT, it got 71% on the test. Super pleased with that's like a good mark. The passing rate for the exam is 75 though, so not enough to pass the test. Then I looked at GPC 4 and that got 85%. Well, in the clear, passing the test and much better performance than the GPC I had made using GPC 4. And for comparison, GPC 3.5 had come down to 71% as well. So I had made taken GPT-4, given it some instructions, and made it as good as the free version of ChatGPT. So what's happened here? How has it gone so wrong that I've taken an existing model, added more data to it, more data specific to the problem, and gotten it to be worse than the original? And I looked back at what GPT-4 is doing. So when GPT-4 was given a multiple choice question, what it does is it go through line by line, reads each of the answers, like works out whether each answer is right or wrong before then coming to an answer. The method I had for my GPT was I wanted it to format to tell me, here's the answer, here's what section it comes from, here's why it, why it's right, why is it, why is it wrong, and then here's a discussion about why the other ones are incorrect in this example. So this actually doesn't work very well for ChatGPT, it almost needs to work it out as it goes, as it almost thinks through each of the options in its brain. And this is what I learned from going back to the documentation looking at the best practices. What's funny for me is that ChatGPT4 is already working on the best practice, and I've now gone and told it to do a different method, and actually that's led to my underperformance here on this task. However, there was still some questions it couldn't get right. And I wonder why this was. And certainly I looked at these questions, some of them are quite vague and quite challenging to interpret what the right answer would be. And in fact, these came down to it where at least there was another option that could be the right answer and it was having to pick what it thought was the best practice idea here. 
actually some of the options it gave weren't weren't bad at all. I feel that some of the underperformance we're actually seeing was actually down to some of the wording of the question, but that that's part of exams, right? I will highlight one question that was asking about exporting to PowerPoint. I was really confused because I looked at the options and there is an option in Tableau to export to PowerPoint, but it wasn't given as an option. And I even went and I loaded up Tableau just to verify I wasn't going insane. Yes, there is export to PowerPoint there. So I've gone back to my prompt and I'm working out what can I do to improve this. So this is what I did. I moved from version one to version two. Version two is a much longer prompt, much more directive to help ChatGBT, but also try and work with its own best practices again, so I'm not going to run into any underperformances. And I checked it. I went back over the queries. I went back, tested it again. It was doing really well. It was actually improving its answers. It was on par with GPT-4 again. So what I found here was that ChatGPT isn't going to like go and remodel itself based on the information I've given it here. What it's going to do is just look through this for reference materials. That's about it, but largely draw on what it already existingly knows. So I, here I wasn't ever going to see any substantial gains in performance, but all I could do was try and mold that prompt, that output to be as useful to me as possible. And this is what GPTs come down to. They're quite useful if you have like a standard task you're trying to do, like I need someone to go and help me fill out the draft for this presentation. ChatGPT can help you do that. If you've got a prompt ready, you can go and make a GPT to help with that service. However, again, it's just saving you time on copy and pasting that prompt from let's say a notepad into ChatGPT. It's just more of a quick start kind of way and a bit of guidance for your users. So they're giving you those standard prompts to start with as well. The difficult part with these GPTs though is that they're quite hard to test. With the limit on how much queries you can send to ChatGPT, so for me comparing the two, it took about a day just by amount of like message limits I got and I was only covering like 35 questions each. So if I wanted to get to a statistical test, like a hundred questions each, that was going to take me like a week. Okay, but I made this GPT for the certified data analyst exam. What of it? So unfortunately, you won't be able to use this in the exam. They don't allow you access to the internet. If you want to go and answer all the questions, which is 70, you're going to hit the right limit. And then you have to wait another three or four hours before that ends. So the exam will be over. So you can't do it all. You still have to learn it. So what I've tried to do is turn this into more of a learning tool. So if you have the paid version of ChatGPT, you can go and use this GPT. You can give it questions. Here's a question. Can you go and answer this for me? You could ask it to give you questions from the syllabus. So we'll go and do that for you as well. If you're interested in making a GPT like this, what I've got is I, in the description, I've got a link to GitHub, which will show you this project. It will give you the data set. It will give you the prompt, both versions of the prompt. So prompt version one, prompt version two. Uh, so you can go and use this and build your own GPT out. Just have a go, see how it goes. Again, test it, see what you think. Uh, that's all for this episode. I will see you in the next one. Bye.